electric arc welding, the modern, economical, simple way to join metals. Many different metals and products can be welded, and with welding, costs can be reduced and products improved. So let's see where welding might help you by watching arc welding at work. Let's look at three principal types of electric arc welding. Metal arc welding, atomic hydrogen arc welding, and inert arc welding. These three types properly applied make possible the welding of many different kinds of metals and products. First, let's look at Hey, wait a minute, Joe. One at a time, please. There, that's better. First, metal arc welding. In metal arc welding, an arc is formed between the electrode and the work. This melts both the base metal and the metal in the electrode. The metal melts off the electrode passes through the arc and mixes with the molten base metal. At the same time that the metal is melting, the covering on the electrode is being consumed and forms a gas shield which protects the molten metal from the air. This is essentially a miniature electric arc furnace in which ingredients in the electrode coating combine with the impurities in the molten pool which float to the top and form a slag over the dense metal deposit. Metal arc welding is done with either motor generator welders which furnish direct current or with transformer welders which furnish alternating current. Let's examine some actual welding applications that have been found profitable. One example is the fabrication of this steel drum. In this welded design, metal thickness is less than in cast construction, with the result that weight is reduced 23%. Another example is the fabrication of this all-welded dump trailer. Four well complete one body in 15 hours using heavily coated electrodes and alternating current. Cross braces are welded inside the hopper and the trailer drawbar is joined to the body with a strong welded connection. In the manufacture of motor graders, welding was found to be the most economical fabrication method. The curved frame is fabricated first as a straight box beam which is welded on this two-head machine using heavily coated electrodes. After welding, the frame is heated and placed in position for bending. The strength and ductility of the joint are clearly shown as a double bend is put in the beam. Arc welding is well suited to assembly line technique. Welded sub-assemblies for tractor transmission housings are welded together on an assembly line where jigs and positioners make welding easy and fast by allowing all welds to be made in the downhand position. The welded transmission housing is lighter than a cast housing, yet it is stronger and will undergo long and rugged service. Welding has found many assembly line uses in the mass production of automobiles where metal arc welding is used as a high production tool in fabricating frames. The frames roll down the line suspended on trunnions, which permit the frame to be rotated so that all welds can be made in the flat or horizontal position. Production is increased, and frames roll off the assembly line to go into the millions of automobiles manufactured each year. Whether your application is large or small, electric arc welding can be advantageously used in tricycles, chairs, small utility trucks, 
Cost savings in small parts can be shown by one manufacturer's experience with this bracket. When a cast bracket was replaced by a welded design, the cost of the bracket was reduced 67%. Among the largest welded products are boilers of giant steam locomotives. Here a longitudinal seam is welded by the submerged arc process where the electrode is surrounded with flux. The smooth joint and the elimination of overlapping plates and rivet holes means no possibility for leakage or for corrosion between lapping surfaces. Thus, boiler maintenance costs are less. Modern diesel-electric locomotive cabs are made lighter by welded construction, and so too are the diesel engines themselves. The frame could be cast, but it is smaller and 30 to 50 percent lighter in the welded design. Welding saves material in fabricating gears, small high-speed gears, to massive 53,000 horsepower gears for ship propulsion. The blanks for gears such as these are fabricated completely by welding. Yes, from land to sea is a simple jump for electric arc welding, which has found wide use in ship construction and repair. In building construction, speed, quietness, strength, and saving of material make arc welding profitable in many applications. Columns can be fabricated in the factory yard and then erected at the site. Welding makes drafting and engineering easier too, as shown by the contrast between these two engineering drawings, one for riveted construction and the other for welded. For bridges, welding is used for beams and for modern metal roadways. For the home, construction is simplified by the use of welding for appliances that go into the home, such as these hot water storage tanks. Welding can often save time and money. The longitudinal seam of the tank is welded on a machine, which in one and a half minutes completes the entire seam and produces a smooth, leak-proof joint. In manufacturing small motor stators, welding machines have lowered costs. While once this was a slow operation done manually, today, with the use of this arc welding machine, small motor stators are welded on a high production scale. The stators are welded in a continuous row, and the operation of the machine is completely automatic. Stators roll down the chute and are fed into the machine. They roll in and out at the rate of 140 per hour from just one machine. Hermetically sealed compressor cases for refrigerators require an absolutely leak-proof joint. This is accomplished on a welding machine which welds the forged end caps to the case at the rate of 40 cases an hour using heavily coated electrodes and alternating current. After welding, a leak test underwater is made with 200 pounds air pressure in each case. The wide range in the use of metal arc welding may be shown as we go from this high production example of small compressor cases to huge boiler drums of four and a half inch thick alloy steel, where sometimes as many as 36 passes are required to complete the weld. These boilers will operate at 950 degrees Fahrenheit and 1,000 pounds pressure. On the end of the drum, a test plate is welded. From this plate, test bars are machined and a 30 degree free bend test of the weld is made. From another section of the plate, a test specimen consisting entirely of weld metal is machined. This specimen is tested for tensile strength.
and the strength of the weld is found to be more than that of the base metal. As a further test, every inch of the weld is x-rayed. Strength, the non-porous quality of welds, is important in all boiler or tank construction. Welding means no overlapping surfaces, no caulking of joints, and the bottoms of the tanks can lie flat with no protruding rivets. All shapes and sizes have been welded. In thousands of miles of steel pipelines, welding has been used to obtain higher mechanical efficiency of joints. Light, stiff, tubular construction for aircraft engine mounts has been made possible only through welding. Modern construction, such as this air conditioner frame, is likewise made easy by arc welding. In repair work, welding is a great cost and time saver. Broken gear teeth can be built up, and all types of repairs can be made. Expensive pieces can be saved, and equipment put back into operation with a minimum of lost time. In the shop and on the farm, broken equipment can be quickly repaired, since convenient alternating current farm welders enable the farmer to make repairs right on the spot. The versatility of arc welding is made possible by the wide variety of electrodes which have been developed, and best results are obtained by selecting the electrode designed for the job. This is easily done by following American Welding Society electrode classifications. The list of metals which can be welded is constantly being increased by new electrode developments. To take full advantage of the cost reductions and weight savings offered by welding, here is an important point. Proper design of your product for welding will increase the benefits which you can obtain from welded construction. The maximum savings are obtained when you do not attempt to reproduce cast or riveted designs with welding. Instead, new designs made specifically for welding should be adopted. Let's let the designer show us an actual case where the bearing bracket for a generator was converted from this cast construction to welded construction as shown in this photograph. The difference between the two designs is clearly evident. Let's take one part of the bracket, a girder, place it on the designer's board and examine its design. When it was cast, holes were necessary to support the upper part of the mold. Brackets had to be added all along the girder in order to ensure a sound casting. As shown in a section view of the girder, the flanges had to be tapered so that the pattern could be removed from the mold. And even though stress in the web is small, the web had to be thick because of the difficulty of casting thin sections. When the girder was designed for welding, it was not necessary to reproduce the details of the cast design. Standard rolled plate could be used, and no holes are required. No brackets are necessary. As the section view shows, all sections are uniform and are thinner than in the cast design. Fillet welds are used to fabricate the bracket. This redesign reduced the cost of the bracket 50%. Now suppose we use, as another example, an ordinary tote box. Riveted construction requires plate stock thick enough to compensate for the weakening which results from punching out rivet holes. Double thickness of metal would be required for overlapping corners or corner plates. If the box were to be welded, little would be gained by removing the rivets and adding a weld instead. For we can eliminate overlapping corners or corner plates with simple corner welds. Also, the box section all around can be thinner than for a riveted type. These savings of material make the box lighter and reduce its cost. The box can be fabricated from three pieces, one which is bent to form the bottom and sides, and two end pieces. They are joined with corner welds. So when you're planning to weld, remember, 
greatest savings are achieved when no attempt is made to reproduce cast or riveted designs. Instead, design to take full advantage of welding. Some metals and applications require the use of another type of electric arc welding, atomic hydrogen arc welding, used for a fine finish in joining thin steel pieces and for joints where no filler metal need be added. In atomic hydrogen arc welding, an arc is maintained between two tungsten electrodes. The arc is entirely free and independent of the work. A stream of hydrogen gas at low velocity flows out through the nozzles of the electrode holder around the electrodes and the arc. This cools the electrodes and prevents their rapid evaporation. The action of the arc changes the hydrogen into its atomic form, hence the name atomic hydrogen. As the atomic hydrogen contacts the work, it changes back into its molecular form. This results in a rapid heat input to the work. The gas shields the molten metal and reduces most oxides that may be on the surface of the base metal. Result? The weld is clean and smooth, with practically no sign of slag or spatter. Now let's see where and how atomic hydrogen arc welding is used. In the construction of turbo superchargers for the engines of our modern airplanes, atomic hydrogen is used because the joint must be made with a minimum of reinforcement, yet must withstand high temperature and vibration. For aircraft gas turbines too, atomic hydrogen welding is used with no addition of filler metal to join stainless steel combustion tubes. The weld is made on the inside of the tubes and since hydrogen has also been fed around the back of the joint being welded, a smooth weld on both sides results. Atomic hydrogen welds in canal tubing with such a fine finish on both sides that the weld can hardly be found. After being formed, the tubing is fed into an atomic hydrogen welding machine where it passes under the arc at a speed of 10 feet per minute. A seam weld is made which is airtight, strong, yet extremely ductile, so that after welding, the tubing can be bent into such shapes as these heating elements. To make long life units, for our modern electric ranges. In the fabrication of water well casings from corrosion resistant steel, problems of corrosion and cracking were solved with the atomic hydrogen arc, where this machine makes a continuous weld at the rate of approximately 36 inches per minute. Sometimes two types of welding must be used on one product, as is done in the fabrication of this rear axle housing. Five welding operations are involved in transforming a flat steel plate to the finished housing. Let's start at the beginning and watch the plates as they are fed into the rollers of the forming mill, which forms the plates into tubes. The tubes emerge at the other end of the mill ready to be welded in a 10 arc atomic hydrogen welding machine which is seen in the background. The tubes are fed into one end of the welding machine and coolant for an interior mandrel flows out through the tube. Inside the machine, the joint is pressed together as the tubes pass under the atomic hydrogen arcs which weld the seam without the addition of any filler metal. As the welded tubes leave the machine, a trimming tool shaves off excess material. After welding, the tube is punched, heated, and swedged, and then heated again for expanding. The weld can be seen on the side of the tube facing the camera. Its strength and ductility are clearly demonstrated as we see it withstand this operation.
After the tube has been expanded to this shape, a reinforcing ring is welded on by the submerged arc process where we see no arc because the electrode is surrounded with flux. The housing then goes to a metal arc welding machine where two flanges are welded on simultaneously. Four welds are made at once since there is a weld on each side of each flange. Spring pads are added manually and the welding on the housing is complete. The entire operation is one of high production and axle housings leave the factory to serve on trucks over our network of streets and highways. One important use of atomic hydrogen welding is to deposit hard-facing metal on equipment such as cutters for rock drilling. Tungsten carbide is deposited on steel and a great increase in cutter life results. In addition to fabricating new parts, atomic hydrogen welding can save thousands of dollars in repair of molds and dyes. Holes can be filled or broken corners build up, for example, since with the atomic hydrogen process, metal with the same analysis as the base metal can be deposited, allowing repairs and engineering changes to be made in an economical way. By being able to repair and remachine this die, $2,000 was saved by the use of atomic hydrogen welding. A third type of welding is inert arc welding. You will find uses for this in welding aluminum and other non-ferrous alloys and thin sections of mild and stainless steel. Inert arc welding is done with an arc surrounded by an inert gas, either helium or argon. Here we see it demonstrated on aluminum. As in metal arc welding, an arc is formed between the electrode and the work. A tungsten electrode is used and is consumed very slowly and is not deposited in the weld. The gas is supplied at low velocity around the electrode. This shields the molten metal and prevents oxidation. Heating is extremely localized and concentrated in a small area immediately under the electrode. The weld is free from oxidation, scaling and spatter. Since no flux is required, no corrosive residue is left. The weld is smooth and uniform and presents an excellent appearance. Filler metal can be added when the joint requires it or the weld can be made by machine and an exceptionally fine finish can be achieved with uniform penetration. Liquid tight edge welds in aluminum containers are made with the inert arc with no addition of filler metal and with no flux. An inert arc welding machine is used to seal a vacuum tight joint in an electronic tube. The closely controlled concentrated heating allows the weld to be made near glass with complete safety. For lightweight aluminum radio cases, inert arc welding has been used. And in heat exchangers of Inconel or stainless steel, tubing is sealed tightly to the sheets with inert arc welding. Soundness, excellent contour, and uniform penetration are shown in a section cut from one of these welds for macrograph examination. From this inert arc welding machine, the barrels really roll out as two halves of an aluminum beer barrel are joined by a circumferential seam. The weld is made in 5 30 seconds inch aluminum at a rate of 22 inches per minute and an exceptionally smooth joint results. Manual inert arc welding has been used to add the side bung and inside the barrel a smooth sanitary finish is obtained. Locomotive cabs are fabricated from aluminum with inert arc welding. A smooth weld is obtained 
which can easily be ground down so that it cannot be detected. And inside the cab, the structural aluminum work can be joined with inert arc welding. Since no flux is required, there is no danger of corrosive residue being left. You can't say of the inert arc, everything but the kitchen sink. For here too, inert arc welding does the job quickly in producing corner welds in stainless steel sink bowls. And it is used to join the bowl to the sink top. The user reports that grinding time is cut nearly in half, and the joints in the finished product are so smooth that they can't even be detected. So when you have a fabrication problem, consider electric arc welding, metal arc welding, atomic hydrogen arc welding, and inert arc welding. These combined with proper design for welding and correct selection of electrodes can enable you to obtain the advantages offered by welded construction. Welded construction means weight saved. With welding, parts can be fabricated faster. And products which are welded have strength and endurance. The most economical fabrication techniques are possible since welded parts are ductile. With welding machines, high-speed production can be achieved. When welding is used, the result is a saving in dollars. In products large and small, and for many different types of metals, a versatile, profitable fabrication method is electric arc welding.